This is a little look at where my progress is with my short film right now. I mean, this part looks good, right? It's mostly green. A little bit of yellow, meaning work in progress. The gray means unstarted. But then as I scroll down, you're gonna see, ah, yes, there is a long way to go. I would say I'm not even halfway through my animation production yet. So the story's all there, and animatics all there, but the animation, oof, there's no turning back. Now I'm gonna see this through. So I need to get a move on with this. Okay, I'm animating shot 27 in this series of screen recordings. I, it feels fun to me because the character stays in the middle, it's kind of stationary while the environment is moving around him and his board. So uh, it's as if the camera is attached to the end of his board. So you can see him and see his expression as he navigates this big wave and kind of turns his board around to face downwards of this wave. Quite inspired by real GoPro footage of uh, surfers like Kai Lenny and, and other big wave surfers. So I've been, I've been battling to clear time in my schedule to work on this personal project and I just find that other little projects keep wailing for my attention, which is making it a struggle for me to stay focused. I have this little commission piece to finish off, and uh, I, I'll be showing that pretty soon, hopefully. And I have some YouTube edits I want to finish, but really I just want to dedicate my time to my personal project. But I realize that some of these, some of these things that are coming up, they're a choice, you know, and some of them I can choose to not do. And I have to question, like, why I'm doing some of these things. And, one of these chosen activities that I really hope wasn't a waste of time is translating all 130 videos in my Getting Started in 2D Animation course. Um, so I created English captions for them for any of you who might be hard of hearing. I also translated those English captions into 12 different languages. Even automating this with Google Translate, it still took a lot of time. This footage is sped up of me just uploading those files and it's a lot. Translations are now up on getting started in 2D animation on animatedgold.com. And I really hope that that wasn't a waste of time. Like I hope international animation students are going to consider getting the course now that it's been translated. But yeah, that took quite a lot of my time actually. And for subtitling the Mastering Motion course, I will be translating them as well, but I'm doing it with an assistant. So that's gonna make it easier. There's more to life than just making animation. That's one of the reasons. There are things that are happening outside of this. Friends and family are having their own lives and they're doing their own things and I want to be a part of that. One of the things that I've told um, someone who was uh, looking for advice, he was telling me all of his problems that were in the way of him doing animation. I kind of realized from listening to him that a lot of those problems, in fact, almost all of those problems were life problems. <laughs> and mastering animation and mastering life kind of go hand in hand, or at least the production of animation consistently. You gotta get some of these life problems locked down where they're under your control and they're not gonna take way too much of your time. I'm talking about time consuming chores, but also clearing space in your mind to be able to be creative. So in the beginning of this project, I was going really strong. I set myself the goal of animating a shot per day. Um, that includes cell shading lines. And I actually managed it for a period of time, but then I realized I was only just about able to do that on really tiny shots, like like the close up of a character's foot in the sand. Okay, I was able to do that, get that finished in a day. But the more complex shots, which are like full body, everything in the frame, multiple characters, those just proved to be like impossible for me to do in a 24 hour period. So I adapted that schedule a little bit to be one shot every two days. And I was able to meet that deadline every two days, at least for some of the shots. And again, some of the shots fell into that, like I could finish them within two days, but then some of the shots that lasted for more than like five seconds, I had to split that up. And I would get really frustrated when like a long shot would take like five, six or seven days to do. But then I just kind of realized like, sometimes you're not in control of these things. Like sometimes a shot is gonna take as long as it requires, you know? It's gonna take as long as it takes. And um, that's something I needed to realize because I was just getting frustrated on too many of these shots, like being like, oh man, it's day seven now, or like it's day five and I still haven't finished this shot. 
But meanwhile, it's like a 10 second long shot. I mean, that's 10 seconds of animation where I'm doing everything, where there's multiple characters, maybe there's a complex effects animation like waves going on. <laughs> okay, so why am I expecting it to be finished within 24 or 48 hours? It's just unreasonable, you know? I'm also hoping these shots in the beginning of the film are taking longer because they're on top of the water and so I have to simulate a lot of water and I don't want to spoil too much about the film but he goes underwater so I'm really hoping that when he goes underwater there'll be a lot less effects to do ironically a couple of bubbles here and there and that's about it but yeah this um this daily average that I'm going by I've been doing this for years now, working out my daily average or working out what kind of daily average is good to aspire to. And I find that that really puts the animation process into something manageable for me, where I can think, okay, if I get three shots done in a week, that's really helpful for me because waking up in the morning, I can just be like, okay, I know how much I need to expect of myself today. And of course, what I'm talking about here is adapting that and fine tuning that so that I'm not like getting mad and frustrated at myself for not always sticking to that daily average and realizing that that daily average can sometimes be a bit elastic because different shots require different approaches and different amounts of time. Whenever I do work on immersion, I make progress. It's just about the distractions. It's about sitting my butt down every day and working. I mean, if I manage to do that and sit my butt down for about five hours on the relevant project, that is a success. But that is a struggle because of all the different distractions of life, you know, things uh, getting in the way. The challenge isn't the animation. The challenge is getting to sit down to actually make the animation every day. Yeah, on these really long projects, you got to measure it one day at a time. All of those days will collect and you'll have made progress by the end of the month. But that is done by putting in daily efforts. All right, enough of a coffee break. I am going back into the room where all the magic happens. Going back into the studio and going to sit down to some work. Let's go. I showed some of my work in progress animation to a friend. He said, it seems like you're making every shot of this film the money shot. <laughs> and if you don't know what the money shot is, the money shot is like the most important shot in the film, or it's like the shot that everyone will remember, or the shot that has the highest quality animation. You might even use the word Sakuga for it. Yeah, I, I guess I kind of am, but that's just because I just think to myself, well, every moment is important in the film. But it did actually make me realize that sometimes maybe I have been putting loads of effort into a shot, like for example, the character's foot hitting the sand. How detailed does that shot really have to be? Like, can't I find a way to do it in a more economic way? Should I be treating every shot of the film with the same priority? Maybe not, <laughs> you know, especially as this is a, a small independent production and uh, I want to get it finished in a reasonable time frame. I don't want to take too long on any idea because I know that ideas expire. And if I let too much time pass between me coming up with the idea and me executing on the idea, I tend to find that it gets harder. I have more energy when I'm closer to the time that I came up with the idea, when the idea is still feeling fresh. Doesn't matter how many films I make, the same problems keep showing up, you know? The problem of wanting to do a lot, but also needing to keep it realistic. <sighs> Thinking about the next steps for this project, obviously the next steps are just continuing to work my way through every shot of the film until it's done. But I'd also like to bring on an in-betweener into the project. I've been building up a lot of scenes so that I can just send an in-betweener multiple scenes for them to get on with. Instead of doing all the in-betweens in a shot, I'll actually intentionally leave some of the in-betweens out 
so that I can hand the shot off to an in-betweener later on um, and just ha hand them like a batch of files um, in TV Paint. At times I've been doing the in-betweens myself. I'm trying to resist drawing all of my own in-betweens because that's works that someone else can do for me. And if someone else can do it, then my time is better spent drawing keyframes. There's no shame in it involving more people and collaborating. Maybe that's paying. Uh, an in-betweener, or maybe it's like doing a favor for a favor. Yeah, if someone else can do it, my time is better spent drawing the keyframes that no one else can draw in the same way as me, or no one else has that vision for. I've got to remind myself this question, like, does Hayao Miyazaki do his own in-betweens? No, <laughs> and neither should I, you know? Just pick a role model and put them into there and just think, how would they behave? <laughs> would they be spending loads of time doing their own in-betweens out of some sense of pride or something? Like, I don't think so. I don't think that's a smart idea. But sometimes it doesn't make sense to outsource in-betweens either. You know, sometimes that will take, it will take longer to like send someone an in-between. Like if you've only got like three in-betweens to do, think of the amount of time it will take to upload that file to Google Drive, brief an artist on how to do the in-betweens, where they can find them and stuff. Like you could have done the in-betweens in that time. So it only really makes sense to outsource your in-betweening if you have built up a lot of scenes which need in-betweening. Same goes for like coloring or anything like that. All right, I have more to say, but I'm gonna leave that until the next video. Make sure you're subscribed so that you see that when it comes out and I'm gonna plug my course here. Thank you for watching. If you want to make animations of your own, Mastering Motion is an advanced online animation course designed to train you in techniques that go far beyond the principles of 2D animation. Advanced techniques like 3D hand-drawn camera movement, fight choreography, effects animation, character animation, as well as my reference process. If that sounds a bit too advanced for you, if you're a beginner, then I've got you covered as well with my Getting Started in 2D Animation course. This one lays the foundations of everything you need to make your own animated films. That includes drawing principles, animation principles, storyboarding principles, and the rendering process. And this is all in one place. No need to hunt down obscure videos in distant corners of the internet. We build you up with animation exercises that grow in complexity as you learn more. It's a course that will help you to develop the ability to fully realize on the screen whatever crazy ideas are going on in your head. Go to animatorguild.com to learn more about these. The link is in the description and pinned in the top comment of this video. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.